Bobby Savage. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. We're out bearding each other. Yeah, mine's mine's got a bit grey. I'm getting nearly forty now. A little bit of white in there. Yeah, I'm very white. <laughs> Whose is longer? Possibly yours, I think. I think we're both disgraceful. BBC, <laughs> we should be clean shaven. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Yes. We count us down. There we are. Five, four, three, two, one. How do you describe yourself in a sentence or two? Insecure, um, shy, um, a nervous person. Why insecure? Well, because I think it's when you're getting absolutely, you know, hammered from pillar to post in the, in the media when you played. I think um, you get a, a comfort blanket around you when you're in the security of your own home and when you're outside that space, you have a reputation and it's a reputation which I didn't like. Is there or was there a Robbie Savage persona? Um, yeah, it was, the, I think, the, the, the pantomime villain um, who upset people, um, but on the inside is a generally decent person. Was there a switch that was flicked when you stepped over the white line and went onto the field of play? Yeah, the winning switch. It was a winning mentality where anything went, um, whether it be if I, if I dived to gain an advantage, which I did in the cup final against Justin Edinburgh, whether it be you know, bringing somebody down cynically to, to get an advantage for my team, it was a winning mentality. When you look back at diving now, mm. I mean, would you say you've dived more than once? Yeah, yeah, no question. Uh, what was that about? It was about getting an advantage. Getting an advantage. But how did you justify that to yourself at the time? When you're in the hustle and bustle of 90 minutes and you've got 10 teammates and 20,000, 30,000 fans in a stadium, um, I wanted to win. And it's wrong. Um, diving is wrong. Um, getting an advantage cynically is wrong, but that was me. Actually... At one point, you held the record, I think I'm right in saying, for the most yellow cards in Premier League history. Yeah, 89, since overtaken, um, Kevin Davis, um, Lee Boyer, Paul Scholes, so I'm fourth, disappointingly. And actually, only two red cards. Two reds, one um, internationally um, for Wales. I believe I was the innocent party on that occasion. Um, and one for Blackburn, two yellow cards. Second was for handball. And the red card you got playing for your country... You were thinking at one point of taking that to the European Court of Human Rights to get it overturned. Yes, I, I certainly was because, you know, people who can watch the challenge with myself against Michael Hughes, Wales against Northern Ireland, um, we both got a red card, and I believe, you know, I was innocent. You did do a little tug. On a short, but <laughs> dear me. And now, after football, are you driven? Are you hugely ambitious? Yeah. How do you, how do you keep that side of your personality going? Well, I'm driven by just looking at Twitter every day, um, the people, the trolls, the, the nasty people on there who have a go at you every single day and, you know, are, are jealous of your, of your life because you made a, a success of it. Is there a risk of getting drawn into Twitter banter that can go wrong? Yeah, there is. You know, when you put a tweet out there, it's out. I, I treat every tweet as if it can make the front page or the back page of, an, of, a, of a national newspaper. So... It's difficult holding it together sometimes from idiots who, who do troll, but it's part and parcel of being a, a, a celebrity. Do you like having a voice? Yeah, I do. I like um, you know six or six, which I do on BBC on the radio. I love it. It's 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 a, it's a it's a live thing. It's a voice, you know. And it might be wrong, but it's my opinion. When you played football, were you more passionate? Did you care more about playing for your? country than you did for your clubs or was it the same? The same because my game was all about passion, enthusiasm and, and, and the will to win. Um, I couldn't change it whether it be for Wales or for my club. And how was it going into punditry? Was that an easy transition to make? Did you, go, did you have training? No training, um, off the cuff, you know, do my research, do my homework, um, my knowledge of football I would say is up there with anybody's. Um, so I just said how it is. You watch a huge amount of football, don't you? Every day, every week, every day. And do people, do you think, respect you for saying it as it is? I think so. I think people will question that, you know, that there comes a time when you, my people might question me, maybe do more research, but they don't understand. My research is in my head. I watch football all the time. I read. And people see the, the hair and the, and, the, and the false tan and, and, the, and the teeth. and they have a Is it a false tan? Yeah, of course. Well, with, in a bottle? Yeah, a bottle, yeah. And only now and again. And, and I have highlights, but so what? It's me. I don't, I don't care what people think. Tell me about your work with William Hill. Does that worry you, that betting can harm people's lives or people can harm themselves through betting? Do you worry being associated with a betting firm? 
No, um, I think it's, it's people's choice. It's people's choice to, to smoke. It's people's choice to bet. It's people's choice to drink. I don't say to anybody, you have to. I, I, I do a preview of football, which, which enables people to hopefully win more money if they want to bet. Um, and I'm pitching with the William O Foundation, which is a Project Africa, which I'm a huge proud to be the ambassador of. And quickly, interest outside of sport. <laughs> the bell's gone quickly cheating. Dog, golf, family. Robbie Savage, very good to see you. Nice, mate.